Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over radio buttons and checkboxes for your web forms. Okay, so we've been making a few different uh, form input types. You know, we did some text boxes and did a bunch of variations of text boxes, password, phone number, email, web address, search form, search text box, and things like that. Let's move over into another style of form element. And if you recall, over on the uh, Flickr, uh, advanced search we have examples of radio buttons radio buttons are great when you want the user to be able to choose one out of a series of options and then we also have check boxes too where you want the user to be able to select multiples out of the series of options now I'm kinda grouping radio buttons and check boxes together because they kinda have a similar purpose and their syntax is very very similar so let's go ahead and get cracking on our radio buttons and check boxes. So I've got my code set up here and by the way this web page that I'm working on it's available for you. If you look in the video description you'll see a link to the demo file where you can check this out. You can look at it online, view the source code and kind of uh, make some tweaks to it and things like that. Okay so I've got a new form set up in a new section here. Now there's one kind of weird thing about our radio buttons. In fact, you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to do a uh, a field set. I mean, you haven't seen that one yet. I'll do a field set with a legend radio buttons and I'll put a closing field set. You're going to see what this does in just a moment, okay? So, for my radio buttons, you have to do this reversed label text versus the actual input. For a text box, it's label text and then the input, okay? With radio buttons and check boxes, it's just the opposite. The input will come first. So I still have a label tag here, but then I'm going to do an input type equals radio. And I'll just kind of leave it there for that. I will have to come back and add some stuff. And then I'll put in, um, let's say these are sh uh, shipping methods. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and have standard shipping, then my closing label tag. So I have the input first and then the label text. And I'll just put a space there. And when I save this and head back over to my web browser and refresh, we'll see that I now have a radio button, which I can click on. Can't unclick it though. And I can reset my form though. And of course I have my label text. You can see the impact of the ledge of the field set. The field set by default makes this little thin border, and there's the legend. It goes right there in the top left corner of the field set. So I'm going to run back over to my CSS real quick. And since this is the first time I've used a field set on here, I'm just going to add a little bit of padding to it. That way, it just looks a little bit nicer. Okay, but let's go back and add some more radio buttons. So my users can't just don't just have the one shipping method. I'm going to go ahead and break it so that they have multiple shipping methods. So they can do standard, they can do uh, express, and we can do two day. Now we have three shipping methods, and pretty much they're all set up the same way. I've got my input type radio, then I have my label text to the right of that. And when I refresh, here we go. But I've, I'm missing something that's going to obviously prevent this from really working. Right now, when a user goes to, to select a shipping method, they choose standard. Then they change their mind. They go to express. Well, I've got it rigged up so that users can select multiples and they can't unselect one. So made a couple of usability flaws here. With radio buttons especially, you want to use a name attribute. Now, Technically, you'll probably be using name attributes in many of your other fields too, like your various text box fields, but I think I'll focus on those in another video. But it's really essential, even in the initial functioning stage, to use a name attribute for radio buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and put name equals shipping. And all three of my radio buttons are going to share the same name. It's important that radio buttons that are part of a group share the same name. Now once I've done this and refresh, now when I choose my first radio button, everything's fine. But when I go to choose the other option, I change my mind, the previous one gets deselected. There we go. Now if you're thinking that you like the user being able to select multiple radio buttons, don't do it, OK? That's not what radio buttons were designed for. Check boxes were are there to allow multiple options, multiple selections. Radio buttons, only one, okay? So I have to choose one, and I can only choose one. Now, a couple other things I'll go ahead and put in. I'm going to put a value attribute in, and I'll just put in ST for standard. Let me zoom out on that a little bit. 
And of course, in my demo here, this isn't going to today. This isn't going to affect what I'm doing here, but when I put that name attribute, I like to have that value. So basically, when this data is sent to a server for uh, to, for processing, it's going to be you know shipping equals st if the user wanted standard shipping, and then of course your program can process that in a particular way. All right, but that doesn't make any noticeable change. Something else you can do is you can put the attribute checked in here. In fact, before I do that, let me go ahead and refresh this browser. So by default, none of my shipping methods are selected. You can change that though, and you could just put the attribute checked. There's no equal sign, just the word checked right in there. So now what's going to happen is one of those radio buttons is selected by default. And you might want to do that for something like shipping method. So my standard is set by default. And then of course I've got I can still change it out to the others when I want to. Now, the last couple minutes here, I'm going to go ahead and take care of some checkboxes. They're very similar. So in fact, I'm just going to copy and paste everything. I'll change this out, checkboxes. And instead of type equals radio, type equals checkbox. And for something, this is going to, checkboxes are good when you want the user to be able to select multiple items. I'm going to take away that checked pre-checked and zoom in a little bit there. So I think what I'll have, maybe these will be um, options, OK? So I'm going to have various options. And I'll choose things like engraving, gift wrap, gift card, OK? EN for engraving, WR for gift wrap, CA for gift card. So now I have my type equals checkboxes. Same thing, input first, and then the label text to the right. So when I go and check this out, refresh, here we go. So there's my checkboxes. And with checkboxes, a user can select multiples or they can select none of them. Doesn't have to, isn't a required. So I wouldn't use shipping method with checkboxes. Okay, so there's a little bit of uh, new form elements for you. Radio buttons and checkboxes. Remember, this demo file is available in the video description. Check it out. I did a little bit of styling to make my radio buttons and my checkboxes larger than normal, so you can uh, certainly investigate that.